Now that Ipsay is getting closer uh, to go live, it's time that we start talking about POIs, persons of interest. Now, a person of interest is simply an individual that needs to be in Ipsay that is not a member of the military. So why would somebody who's not in the military need to be in Ipsay? Well, many of us uh, have been in a situation or in an organization where a DA civilian or government civilian supervises us. We've also been in organizations where there's another service, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, who are a direct supervisor. And they will be able to use IPSE to perform their supervisory duties uh, for us in IPSE. As an example, uh, an APAR, an award recommendation, an absence request. And so this video is just gonna show us how really easy it is to add a POI in IPSE. Now, just because we add a POI, it does not mean that they automatically have some sort of elevated access. They still need to complete the ELM training uh, requirement that would allow them to serve as a supervisor um, with NFSA. Um, all this is really doing is making them a person in IPSA um, so that you can assign those types of roles and responsibilities in the system. It's also important to note that not anyone can do this. You have to have the correct row class permission in order to add a, a POI in IPSA. And just as a refresher, we have uh, several categories of POIs. We have contractors, government civilians, foreign nationals, local nationals, and other services. Now, just because you can add a POI doesn't mean you add all the individuals as POIs. So if you're in an organization that has a large number of government civilians, you don't need to add all of the government civilians into IPSA, only the ones that require access to perform supervisory duties within IPSA. I don't believe that IPSA is meant to be an accountability system for government civilians and contractors and such. So there's no need to necessarily add all of those individuals in IPSA. I'm logged as an HR professional who has the ability to add a POI. It's in my uh, row class settings. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do. Real quick, I'm gonna click on the nav bar, navigator, I'm gonna go to workforce administration, personal information, add a person. So the screen comes up, I just click on add a person. Another scenario where you would have a, a POI would be in, in, in many organizations, there are government civilians who support a, a reserve command and so they are also a reservist in the same organization. So those individuals are called dual persona and they would have a member member account or a government um, US Army member account and then they would have a POI account to serve as a supervisor if, if that was necessary as a government civilian. So again, not all government civilians who are also in the reserves who are also in the same unit necessarily need to be added. But if you are an individual dual persona, meaning you are performing supervisory duties as a, as a soldier and as a government civilian or a person of interest, you have to switch out your cat cards. You can't log in as a government civilian to perform military duties with that cat card in Ipsy. All right, so real quick, we're gonna walk through. I'm gonna um, talk about these fields and then I'll fill them in and we'll move forward. So the effective date, obviously that's pretty easy. It's just what we're doing here. Um, the first thing we need to do is click add name. So here's where we will type in the name of the individual and we can give them the proper measure of address and we will go ahead and start entering the information. So now what we'll do is we'll hit the refresh name button and that will change the display uh, so that it reflects in the, in the field. So we'll click okay. Okay, so now we see we have John Snow. So we're gonna click down here and add date of birth. Now, again, if we don't see the little, the little asterisks here, we know that it's not necessary to add, so um, we don't have to necessarily put that in there. But we're just gonna start picking some stuff to fill it out. All right, so I filled in all these fields. You see we have the, with the asterisks here, it means that it is a requirement. Uh, so we go ahead and put those in. Now down here under this national ID, we have to enter two things. We have to enter their DOD ID number and their social security number. So it's real easy to do. So we're just gonna enter the DOD ID. 
and we're gonna add a, hit this plus sign, and we're gonna change this drop down to social security number. And we're just gonna put in a social security number. Okay, so now I've got the social and the DOD ID. I make sure that the DOD ID number is the primary, and I go back up to the top and I click on these tabs over here. It's important that we click on these tabs because we can't move forward until some of the information on here is updated. So again, we don't have any requirement for an address, but if I wanted to, I could click on this little hyperlink here and put in an address. All right, so I've filled in the address. I've added the phone number, which is a requirement. We know by this asterisk. And I've typed in the email address. I selected other, and I just typed in their government email address. Now I'm gonna go back up to the top here tabs, click on regional, and here's where we can enter some demographic information. Again, it's not necessary. None of these categories are a requirement. It's up to you if you wanna fill them in. And finally, we're gonna to go to the organizational relationships. And this is where we're gonna designate what type of person of interest they are, and then we're going to associate them to our organization, okay? So here, it's very important that we select person of interest, and the screen will refresh, and here we can pick which type. So again, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about contractors, foreign nationals, government civilians, local nationals, and other military services. So each of those selections um, gives the operator ID a different character at the end. So all military members are .01, and then these characters will either be .02, .03, .04, and etc. So it's very important you pick the correct one. So we're gonna pick government civilian. And then from the checklist mode, we have to select person of interest. We always select person of interest in this field. Now, before we click save, we wanna add a relationship. So we're gonna click that button. And this is the field where we designate them to our organization. What we wanna do is click get enabled security types. And this is gonna give us some of the defaults that we know we need. So now we know that we have to pick a value for each of these empty fields in order for this person to be added as a person of interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these out. So when this screen comes up, it gives us an option. Okay, so are you active component? Are you Army Reserve? Are you Army National Guard? So if I was from the state of Florida, I would need to pick the Florida National Guard. And that's gonna give me the correct organizations within the Florida National Guard. But this training database is an active component database, so I'll pick Army Active Component. When you are doing a POI, generally the values here you see in one, um, while they'll be unique for you, generally they won't change unless you change organizations. Because I'm Active Component in this training database, it's always gonna be Army Active Component. What will change are the values in, in column two. So I just selected this uh, search menu here and I picked my location of my organization. But when you get to the department ID, um, depending upon your level of access, this could take some time to refresh because it's gonna go through all of the department IDs that are available to associate this individual. Again, that should be restricted based on your hierarchical permissions, uh, but in this database, it's not. It, it goes through the entire department ID list. So it takes some time. And remember, department IDs are essentially UICs when we're talking about IPSA. So I know my department ID uh, for this organization, so I'm just gonna type it in to make things go a little bit quicker. And you'll start to learn these as well. So I've entered it and hit the tab key, and then this should refresh and recognize that department ID. Now, when you, when you hit this button, if you hit this button by mistake because you don't know your department ID, you can go through a search process or a filtering process to sort of narrow it down. But it's best to know your department IDs, maybe have a little cheat sheet on your wall that says the UIC is X and the department ID equivalent in IPSA is Y. And that way you'll start to remember them. But now here I'm done. So again, what I've done here is I've associated this civilian, this POI to my organization in IPSA so that they will be able to get permissions, uh, supervisory positions, elevated roles in IPSA for my organization. So now that I'm done, I click apply and I click okay. And now this is gonna take me back to where I started and I need to click save 
so that it saves this person as a person of interest in the organization. So I click save. Now I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain, I just wanna go over this because it happened a lot when we were training. This email address, it needs to end in a dot .mil. Uh, so they can't enter civilian. It's got to be a government email address. Um, but again, that's in the training environment that may not exist uh, once you're in the production. But what's really key here, the takeaway is that I have an Empel ID. If you see it right here on the screen, this individual now has their own employee ID, and that's what will be used to um, grant them access to things um, if they are to be, you know, as a supervisory role, that would be their it's a number um, so that they can do actions and uh, supervisory duties within it say so that's it that's the point and the reason and the how-to of adding a POI in if say we wanted to get this video out now uh, because a lot of these POIs need to be added and provisioned into the system um, so if we do this now they can have their elevated roles uh, and get their ELM training done now so that when it comes time to go live they're ready to to get at it and inside of ipse uh, and and perform their duties as supervisors so get with your cutover teams um, get with your tras make sure you understand how that process works to get uh, all the training requirements done getting the provisioning done for uh, pois but this is a simple process of adding a poi in ipse i hope you enjoyed it make sure you follow us on youtube hit that subscribe button Go ahead and keep tracking us and follow us, follow our stream on S1Net and MillTube. Defend and serve.